Hello and welcome to the third video in the etymology series where I will talk about townlands. For all of you who are not Irish, because I do know I have a somewhat international audience, a townland in Ireland is the smallest administrative unit, even though there's not a lot of administration going on in them anymore. So they're below a parish. Some parishes only have one or two townlands, but some have way more. And there are also subtownlands. So there are subdivisions for some townlands, but it's the smallest unit. And if you're in Ireland, you're probably familiar with townlands.ie, which gets its data from OpenStreetMap. And if you're not, you can check it out, townlands.ie. And I will start with the townlands that are named in a similar fashion to field names, which I talked about in the last video. You do get the odd one named after its shape, um, not so much after a crop or animals held in it, because a townland is too large to just grow one crop in. Um, you might get a name of a forest, or it might be named after the fact that there's a forest in it. You get that in all the townland names that start with cool or kill, uh, being derived from the Irish quill for forest or wood. But I won't. I haven't found any that are named after um, a shape or something like that. So we're going to start with the landmarks and kind of going back in time. It's kind of a little bit um, chronological, this one, but not an awful lot. So we'll start with Rathlogan, which is in County Kilkenny. Most of the examples, again, will be from Kilkenny, but not all of them. So Rathlogan is in West Kilkenny at the border to Tipperary. And it is named, as you might have guessed, after a Rath, a ring fort. And it is a magnificent one that I have actually visited. So you'll be uh, prepared to be amazed. So I'll turn the data off again so you can take it all in. So that's it there. So you have a massive structure there. And you can actually still see the entrance, the trackway into it. And there's a remains of a, a building here, a house as well. All mapped, obviously. Um, if you're interested in visiting, you have to ask the guy who lives here. There's a stile into this field through his property, but you have to ask him. It's on his land. He might have animals there, I don't know. I can't remember if they were sheep or something like that. This actually looks like maybe a collapsed sutura, I don't know. And there's field systems and all that. Anyway, I digress as usual. So I'll go to the townland boundary. I could have, uh, well, I've shown you what, what it's all about. So I'll just search for it again. And it's the locality, not the civil parish. So you click on the locality and that highlights the whole townland. And then you can zoom in and go into editing. And it will still have the townland boundary highlighted. That's why I went in that way. So you have all the tags here for the townland. So admin level 10 means it's a townland and then you have all these kinds of things that we won't go into. The Irish name I presume they've taken from Log Anim. I didn't check this because I have a different one that I found in O'Kelly's place names for of County Kilkenny. But anyway, so we'll type the key that you've already maybe familiar with if you have followed the other two videos. Name colon etymology. I'll just type in ring for it because it's named after that ring for it. So it's named after that ring for it that I showed you. And then I've also created a wiki data entry which in a lot of cases you will have to do if you want to map it like that. So name etymology wiki data. So that's the entry that I've um, created. So the name that O'Kelly gives is Ra'i Lohan. And I've put the alternative name there. Um, and that's for the ring for it. That's not for the townland. The townland itself has a wiki data entry as well. And um, but I created this for the ring for it, so I can copy this number and paste it in here under name colon etymology wikidata. 
and there's no Wikipedia article for this wing fort yet. Um, but I don't think I'll find the time. So that's all we can do for this one. Added name etymology. And the next one then um, is Rath Saglish. So it's another one that's named after a Rath. This one here, which turns out isn't actually a Rath, it's a ring barrel. But when the townland names were chosen, people believed it was um, a Rath, so the name stuck. They're not gonna rename the whole townland. So um, again, I'll click on the locality. So I have the whole townland highlight it and go into the editing mode and scroll down here and add name etymology and I've formulated it already so I don't have to type it all again now because I'll make mistakes so I've translated it so to speak wrath of the church a ring fort oops a ring barrow formerly believed to be a ring fort in the townland hope that's all right and I have all kinds of tags on the ring barrow so you can check that out and then save that the next one is called Port Nascoli it's in South Kilkenny and it's one of those townlands where we surveyed attached buildings And because there's also a townland called Portna Holly, I thought I'd look it up. That's how I um, how it ended up on my list. So this is the townland, and Owen O'Kelly says it's named after it's the fort of the school. He says there's no tradition of anything about a school there. A bit suspicious, um, but there is a fort which isn't also isn't a fort. It's a Martin Bailey here in this townland. Um, but maybe there was a hedge school there, but there's no, as he says, there's no tradition. Nobody knows. I find it a bit strange that he jumps to the conclusion that it's named after a fort when there is water access and there's port in the name. But obviously I don't have enough Irish to decide whether this could be a, a port along the river. Um, anyway, so this is what he thinks it is. And I think it's also, I can't remember now if Canon Carrigan also thought that that was what it was. We'll go with O'Kelly's um, interpretation and that's always the case with townland names, well most times. Um, if, they, um, if you can't really decide what the Irish name means and then sometimes the Ordnance Survey people, because the Irish had been suppressed for so long, sometimes people didn't even know the Irish name anymore so they had to deduct the Irish name from the English name, which is, you know, you have to know what it means before you can come up with that Irish interpretation of it. So it's, as I said before, it's a vicious circle. Um, name etymology. So um, it, it might not even be related to school. It could be something completely different. Maybe there was a person called Scully or something. I don't know if that's an Irish name. Um, I just, yeah. I typed this earlier and I'd already forgotten. So in the Red Book of Ossery, it's called Polna Skulle, which is the whole of the school, maybe, if it is. But then it would certainly not be this fort, because a hole is something very different than a fort. Who knows? And then one that I came across when I was mapping Cairns. I was tidying the map, Heapstown in County Sligo um, and it's named after a cairn, a heap of stones as someone might say, which is here. I'll click on the locality and I'll show you the heap of stones, the cairn, which is actually a pas passage tomb because it is on Wikidata and it is even on Wikipedia and it's not my doing for once. So there you can or you see it, I put it up bigger. So it's it's quite a heap of stones there. If you compare it to the car, it's a small car, but it's still a massive cairn. And there's a passage tomb underneath there. So 
we have the Wikidata number, the Q number, and then there's also an English Wikipedia entry and also a German Wikipedia entry, and I swear I have nothing to do with that. So I have this highlighted again. And the, the um, Irish is Bolly and an Cairn. Pardon my uh, pronunciation. I thought when I looked it up first that I had a different Irish name, but this is what it says on Loganum. So we'll go into the editing mode. And you can see it there as well. And I'll turn the data off again. It's, it's really, it's a massive heap of stones. So I have, of course now I have to highlight the townland again. If you are in that situation, um, so the blue and white line, that's the townland boundary most times. And you see it's because it's it's Heapstown on one side and Dun Shaheen. On the other side, um, you have to choose Heapstown then again. And then it gets you to the same entry that you would have gotten if you had highlighted it or just went into the editing mode. So name etymology, and it's the uh, large um, passage tomb covered by a cairn, and then name etymology wikidata, get that number, and name Etymology Wikipedia. And we can copy this. I'm going to use the English one. Copy this, Heapstown Cairn. And very important, the EN because it is the English version. Void. Save that. Then what you also get, of course, and you're probably familiar with that, is that townlands are named after, after saints, which is either because there is or was a church there that is dedicated to a saint, or because there is a holy well and they could can have both, of course. So I have two examples for you. One is John's well in Kilkenny. So this is the townland and it has the little village Johnswell here which with the Johnswell National School and St John's the Baptist Church which isn't actually in the townland of Johnswell and the well is here and there used to be a pattern I don't know if they still celebrate I know that they did until sometime I think in the 19th century and then it got a bit too well not very holy, let's put it that way. And one of the bishops put a stop to it then. So John's well. And there's also, um, if you watched the last one with Cantwell's Castle, there's the Cantwell River that flows down to Cantwell's Castle. Anywho, going in. And add the name etymology. And I put down Holy Well dedicated to St. John. That should do. I don't think the Holy Well has its own Wikipedia or Wikidata entry, but that's where it looks like it's pretty large. St. John's Day is 23rd of June, I think. Uh, it's here. Okay, so that's how it's spelled. So I'll go to where the tober is, the, there, the holy well. And I want to quote O'Kelly to you. The O'Kelly place names for County Kilkenny. And there might be similar books for your area as well. We're quite lucky to have O'Kelly. He's not always right, but it's still tremendous work that he did without computers and stuff. Page 13. Um, well of the pest or worm. There is no local tradition nor documentary evidence as to the origin of the name. Almost all Freshford town is in this townland. But when I walk the... What's it called now? There's a loop walk in Freshford. 
the name escapes me, but um, so it goes up here through the forest and then down here and comes up here. I was talking to a gentleman who lived in this house here and he told me where the holy well was, which I had already mapped. Um, but he also explained to me the name and um, he also said the pest and worm story. But he says it helps against ringworms and I think I remember that he was actually healed from ringworms drinking from this. Yummy. So it's always worth talking to the locals and you might find out more than uh, is in the literature. So name etymology. And I've prepared this again, um, well of the pest or worm. And um, then water, drinking from the water heals ringworm, apparently, is what I put down. So I have no, um, I, there's no wiki data. No, but the well is here. It's covered up now. But I think there was um, a path going down. So this is where the gentleman lives I, that I talked to and I got one or two, one, two field names from him. And he said, yeah, could go down here, I think, and then this way. I have to go back to Freshford, do some more serving for several reasons. It'll come up again. So these are the ones named after holy wells. And then, of course, you have the ones that are named after churches. So, for example, we have Temple Martin in Kilkenny. There might be more than one because he's a popular saint. There's Temple Martin. And here is the church and the graveyard. And there was also a St. Martin's well, which might be covered. Um, I have been there. I have walked around this graveyard. Um, so it's named after this. So if we go into edit, name etymology. Um, so Temple Martin is just means Church of Martin. Church of Martin. And I seem to have created, or maybe somebody else did. No, I think I did that today. My memory. Ah. Yeah, I created that today. Um, I created the Wikidata entry, so I have something to use here. It um, spelling. It's not easy. Um, and I'm sure I have a picture of it somewhere. I just haven't found it yet and uploaded. That is one thing. So if you are following this tutorial, even if it's just for, for one or two townlands, it would be really nice. A lot of the townlands are already on Wikidata. If you do have a, a landmark there, if you could take a picture and upload it to Wiki Commons, and then you can use this here on Wikidata, there is a statement called image. And you can add it there and then that would be really helpful if we had the, la the landmark on the Wikidata page, please. Um, you can wait until Wiki Loves Monuments comes around again and take a really nice picture and then you might even win in the photo competition. It's usually in September. So what was I doing? I copied this number and I've already pasted it. And then I can upload this. I don't know if the, we could introduce um, a key etymology name, colon, etymology image maybe even for cases like Heapstown. Just an idea. So that's Temple Martin. The other one is Kilri near Kells. So it's there and we have a couple more field names there. You see the orchard and you can... Um, I can't remember if who did that. I'm not going to claim any more because I've been wrong before. So this is the town land. We are cheap. And Kilri is was a monastic site here, around here somewhere. Well, around the High Cross and the Round Tower and the Church Ruin. If you want to visit, um, 
you can drive there from Kells. You can park your car there. It's not a lot of room, so it's really only room for one car. And it will say, and I think I must have used this example before, it will say uh, beware, beware of the bull in the field. I have never actually seen the bull, so I've been there three or four times and I have never encountered it, thankfully. But anyway. So I just turn the data off again to show you what it looks like. So here's the high cross, which might have an image and the round tower and there's the church ruin but there used to be more there used to be a whole um monastery i don't really see much it might be a bit lumpy and bumpy here and i think somebody told me that there's a holy well somewhere around there as well i don't know so now i have to find the townland again yeah that's it name Etymology, and I'll just put down former monast monastery. See, that's what happens if I type it. It just takes too long. It's too much pressure. And then name etymology wiki data, and the number. Oops, I can show you the wiki data entry. So Kilri does have some images. So there's the high cross. Oh, I didn't know he uploaded images. I know him, I think, the photographer. And there is the round tower and the church ruin. And you have four, um, you have an explanation in four um, languages, Jesus. So well, it's good I checked that out because there is a Wikipedia name, etymology Wikipedia. And we'll use the English one again. It's just curry in this case and see if that sometimes then you get the case and I might have mentioned that in the last video that a whole townland is named just after one field and I think it is the case in Carrageen I won't go there again um, Carrageen in County Kilkenny where there is a field called the rocks and it might have had an Irish name before that but for some reason you know it was translated and then the English name stuck because there are bare rocks in the field that used to be larger. And that might be why it's called Carrageen, because that means little rocks. Another one I want to show you is Castle Field, also in County Kilkenny. It's near Bennett's Bridge. And it's again that area where my friend has collected all these field names. So there's the townland. And it is named thus because there used to be a castle there called the Black Castle. And I think it has been incorporated into the house. I might stand corrected there. She might uh, correct my entry then. But the house, um, I've been in the house, has very thick walls. I think I was told that it's, it's, it uses stones from the castle anyway even though the castle might be, have been somewhere different. So we'll go in there. And at the um, name etymology. And I typed down um, black castle possibly integrated into the house now or something like that. So I think this part here might be part of the castle. I can't remember now. And unfortunately, I don't have a picture for you. I haven't used any sources so far. Well, that's, that's not very good, is it? Um, Okelis place names. Being a very bad example here. Got carried away talking. Another example where that might have happened is Clasher Crow, which is again near Freshford. I told you we were going to go back. There are different interpretations of the Irish name, of course, and I've put that in here. I've indicated that here under name GA. I think Log Adam has Clash and Crow, and Crow, and O'Kelly has Glash and Crow. I don't know if that's a dialect thing. That maybe it. 
either the, the proper pronunciation, if there is such a thing, is clash and grow, and that maybe in the Ossery dialect they say it a bit softer, that's not a linguistic term, but um, you might know what I mean, because that is a phen phenomenon that happens in, the, um, in some dialects in Germany. But it might make a huge difference between the, the meaning of clash and clash. But it's the supposedly one of the possible sites of the Battle of Clash of Crow, hence the name, which happened in 1169 between the Anglo-Norman invaders and the local Irish people. And it might mean the trench of the gore or something like that, or something bloody anyway, or the field of the battle or something, like a field of the slaughter, the field of the slaughter, I think. In one of the Anglo-Norman sources, because they're the winners, they get to write the history, they, it mentions them coming along the Noor. I'm not sure the Noor is actually mentioned, but it says a big river between Kilkenny and somewhere, Tipperary. Um, and it's where two rivers, the, the, the Ar Arigna River and the Nuena River meet, which would be here. I have my doubts that they actually fought there because, as you can see, it's very watery. Um, and also, that field isn't actually in Clash of Crow. It might mean the there's also a civil parish Clash of Crow, okay, which is also not it because the river is still on the other side. Um, there's also another town land or um. Another parish here, Balinam, Balinamara, I think, which doesn't have a townland uh, of the same name in it. There's Balinamara. So that's the whole parish. And that means the, is it the fort of the mouth of the dead or something. Um, so there might have been another battle, battle there, or it might be the same battle because it went on for a couple of days. Nobody really knows. They have found some bones and some weapons, I've heard, but I haven't really been able to point um, down where. Anyway, long story short, there is supposed to be a field called Clash and Crow in the townland of Clash and Crow. But again, I haven't figured out where that is. I am in the process of trying to find the field names in this area. So there might be an update video at some point. Long story. Name etymology. Um, the funny thing is that there is no Wikipedia entry for this battle, and I'm very surprised because that such a male-dominated um, subject area battles as are like locomotives. It's, I was saying to a friend, it's like a locomotive missing on Wikipedia, which doesn't happen ever. So I'm I'm surprised that nobody has written a Wikipedia article about it. I won't. I've, I've done a wiki data entry. So I have formulated it all here. I'll try to read it to you again. Trench of the Gore, one possible translation. Possible location of 1169 battle between invading Anglo-Normans under Dermot McMurrah and against, I should say, and, battle between and, King Donal of Ossory and his Irish troops, Song of Dermot and the Earl. And that's where it's described. It's a 13th century um, French Norman text, but translation is available and it's all online. So that's name etymology, name etymology Wikidata, which I have created. But uh, there's another source there for you that you can look it up in. Um, I should probably also mention at some point that there's also a key name colon etymology description, which some people use instead of name etymology, but I'm following the wiki and the wiki doesn't say that. But it has come to my attention that some people do it. Source. Um, Oakley's Clinton's and Canton Carrigan History 
and antiquities and so on. What you also get sometimes, and I should probably have put that at the beginning of the video, is naturally occurring things. Um, like the soil or the, the ground or water bodies. One example, there's one example that I came across while mapping in Ross Common, Turlock Moor. And um, a Turlock, if you're not Irish, is a an intermittent lake or pond. So sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. And this is how they are displayed on OpenStreetMap. They ha they're they not fully blue, they have this um, stripey structure. Whoa. So this is the, the Turlock Moor, so the, the big Turlock. And this is what it looks like in Esri. Now you see it, now you don't. And this is what it looks like in on Bing imagery, so it, there's much more water in the Bing imagery. And that's one way of telling that it is a turlock. And also there's a clue in the townland name. Uh, here. Name etymology. I never learn how to spell. Um, arch turlock in the middle, or just in the townland. So I'm gonna turn, turn the data off again to show you. So this is Esri Clarity, it's probably eight years old, the imagery, and the Bing imagery is much younger. It actually looks like there could be a Cranoch there. Hmm. I won't add a, a source there because it's a bit too obvious. The other one is also in County Ross Common, it's called Rockland. It's not the site of a festival. There it is. And um, when I zoom in, as I've just done, you see all these gray lines. They're all dry stone walls. And there are loads in County Roscommon. Um, so Rockland is because the ground used to be very rocky. But because you can't really do much agriculture on land like that, you have to clear the fields. And the best way to get rid of all the stones is to make them into walls. So this is what that looks like when you're mapping them. And without the data, so this is what they look like. They're just white lines with a bit of a shadow. And that's a fairly good hint that they are dry stone walls. I'll go back to Bing there. And turn the data back on. If I go to the um, British War Office map, this one here, for example, you see all these symbols here, these half circles, that is to um, indicate that there's rocky soil. And when you look now on the satellite imagery, it's all gone. So it's in the, all the rocks are in the walls now. Um, and you get other areas where it's more obvious where um, this is more boggy here. So this is more, that's the, the boggy symbol so it's a bit more wavy than this one and you see there's also a standing stone and more interesting stuff but I don't want to get distracted stop it so Rockland name etymology oh. formerly very rocky soil rocks uh, semicolon rocks have been cleared away and turned into dry stone walls i have also done a video about dry stone walls which i will uh, link up in the description it's a very interesting topic and i may also mention the dry stone walls association of ireland if you have dry stone walls 
um, and you want to get them fixed and you want to learn how to do that, the Drystone Wall Association of Ireland are the people to contact for that. Added name etymology. So the video is probably already terribly long, but I still have more to show you. It's the last way of naming townlands, though. It's the ownership. Um, back in the day when people owned whole townlands, which was either the church, um, and then you get places like Bishop's Meadow and Bishop's Town and all these kinds of things. I won't go into those. Um, but there are also families that owned townlands. And that was after the dissolution of the monasteries under Henry VIII and his lovely daughter. And um, people came in and bought all that land and gave it their name because they owned it. The first one is Bramblestown because we were there in the last video and I said I might mention it again. So it's the name of um, a village and also of a townland. And I think John O'Donovan, he thought it was just called that because there were a lot of brambles growing there, so the town of the brambles. But um, Canon Carrigan disagreed. Does that make sense? Is that in the chronology? One of them, either Canon Carrigan or O'Kelly disagrees and it says, no, it's actually, I think it was Ken Carrigan, said, no, it's named after someone called Bramel, Bravel or something. So it's just a re anglicization of the Bravel or Bramel name. So it was Carrigan. <laughs> name etymology. So it's Bram Bravels, Bravel. Bramalt's homestead, according to Carrigan, is what I have noted down. So I added etymology and then sources, Carrigan, history and antiquities, something like that. Of Osri, of the Diocese of Osri. Another one, funny one, and I could go on and on and on, and I will for a while, Physician's Town which is west of Callan in County Kilkenny. There it is. And the Irish now is unpronounceable for me, but the old name that I found in O'Kelly was um, Ballinashig. And um, O'Donovan also has something like that, Ballinashig. And, and according to either O'Kelly or Carrigan, it's actually after a family called the Sheehys or the O'Sheehys. And they were the physicians of the McCarthys, the monster family, the McCarthys. And they must have lived there. I don't know. It doesn't go any further with the explanation. You have to make up the rest then. And this is how horrible Bing imagery is in Kilkenny. It's not as nice as in Roscommon. Name etymology. And I'll just paste that there. So that's Physician's Town. And then you get all these merchant families in Kilkenny that I have mentioned in previous videos. That were so rich that they could buy all that land after the dissolution of the monastery. And name it after them. And the most prominent are probably the archers. So we have archers, Rath, archers, field, archers... Archer's Grove, and they're all named after the Archer family. I would like to do at some point um, a map of all the townlands that are named after those families, just to see how much land they owned, because it was an awful lot, um, just, just by the name, and they owned more. Sometimes they didn't change the name. So let's look for one Archer example. Archer's Field, which is now in Kilkenny City. Or maybe, no, we don't mean the road, we mean... There's Archer Street Lot as well, so that's named after them. Let's go for Archer Street Lot then, because it has their name in it. Maybe it's spelled with an apostrophe, like in John's Well. That's why I couldn't find it. No. It must be here somewhere. Here. 
So there's the town lounge. Name etymology. Um, Archer family merchant family in Kilkenny. And I have created a Wikidata entry for the family. I'm not sure that's something you can do. I mean, I've just done it, but it might get deleted. So I've created three for the archers, the rows and the raggeds. And I will have to go and add their um, coats of arms and stuff like that at some point. And then I suppose I could copy that and add the same to the street called Archer's Field. Because it's also the Archer's. And save. And the next family are the Raggeds. You've probably heard of Bally Ragged. But I'm not going to use Bally Ragged, actually, um, because that's too obvious. There is also a Ragged Land here, which also has a touched cottage in it. So it's on the way to Bennett's Bridge, and there's also Warrington. Um, the Warrings were, Warrings were also one of those merchant families. I might just add that while I'm there. Um, they were intermarried with the Rose family, which will be the next example. So, Ragged's Land, name etymology, Ragged family, Merchant family in Kilkenny, and name etymology Wikidata. I've created that as well. So, that's the Ragged's, and the other one was the Warrings. Warrington. I'll do name etymology possibly after warring warring family a merchant family in Kilkenny. I haven't created a wikidata entry for them because it's one of those spontaneous things that I do. So that's the Ragged family, and the last one then is the Rose family from Rose House in Kilkenny, and also Bishop David Rose, their most prominent son, I suppose. Um, but there is also a townland called Ruth Town. Or maybe I'm spelling that wrong, no. And um, that's one of the spelling variations that you get in their name because. Um, family names didn't have just one spelling. In John Rhodes' will, he spells his name three different type, uh, three different ways. And Ruth R O O T H was one of them, and here it has changed to Ruth R U T H, and that family is still around. And there is actually still a John Rhodes field and a Rhodes field in Ruth Town. So there is, but maybe, maybe they had a farm here. They had way more land than this. Um, but this is the only one where they left their name in it. It's right next to the John Moore Caves, in case you ever go there. So name, etymology, um, root family, a... Merchant family from Kilkenny or in Kilkenny, whatever, or not from. And name etymology. It's quite a common name in Germany as well, which is my theory is that they were actually from somewhere in Germany. And the Wikidata entry show you. I have an image here. It's a penny, it's an Edward Rose penny that he had minted and their coat of arms that they all have in common, they all have variations, but it's a deer and an oak tree, which might be a bit difficult to see, but there's a deer and the oak tree is in the background. 
after. They're actually not the last ones. I just want to mention the um, Shortall's town after the Short Shortall family, which I have also mentioned in the street name video, because there used to be a Shortall's Lane in Kilkenny. Freenie's town is also named after a Norman family, not a merchant family, but um, an Anglo-Norman family. And Bally Philip might be. I'm not quite sure. I didn't look it up. Then... After the dissolution of the monasteries and after all these merchants had bought all that land, that went well for a century and a half, one. Then Oliver Cromwell came along and put a stop to all of that. And we're going back to um, Cantwell's castle. I've mentioned that before several times. The townland now is called Sandford's Court, but it used to be called Cantwell's Court because the Cantwells had a court there, they had a castle, and the court is there, the court field, from the last video, and the castle field, and um, the land was then, they were expelled to Connacht, or killed, can't remember, and the land was given to a, I think it was a General Sandford, and he renamed it into Sandford's court. And the whole town land is now owned by two brothers, and they kept they kept the, oops, the Cantwell's court name for this farm. So this farm is actually called Cantwell's Court. Should have put that on it. All right. So when I said in the first video, and I wanted to say that in this one, I forgot in the beginning, um, to quote my professor again, who said that if you know language history, you know the world's history. It is very true for um, place names, especially in Ireland. Because there's a lot of history information in in the place names so there's Sanford's court and save that and the last one then yes definitely the last one is Kramer's Grove and that's just over here here and it the full name so to speak is Grove or Kramer's Grove because and I've mentioned that also in the last video it was the hunting ground for the, the Cantwells so it was just a grove a forest and um, after Cromwell came along and redistributed the land he didn't give it all to General Sanford he gave this piece to a guy I think it was Nicholas Kramer who was actually from Swabia, which is now in Germany. It's where Stuttgart is. So, the very early uh, German settlement here. Well, you know, considering. As in Irish terms, it's not very early, but compared to me, I'm fairly recent. So there's Cr Grove or Kramer's Grove, and that was annoys me so much on Google Maps. They keep calling it Kramer's Grove, makes no sense historically whatsoever and I've written to them time and time again explained it to them do they listen no um, Nicholas Kramer doesn't have his own Wikipedia entry or Wikidata source local knowledge because the farmer told me for some reason it's not explained in O'Kelly's place names. So thank you for staying with me for so long. I have to clue how long it is, but um, it feels very long. And there are a lot of examples, but I thought there's something interesting about most of them and I didn't want to keep any of from you. So thank you for sticking around for so long and I hope you're enjoying this. I might do one or two more follow-up videos on the etymology topic. I haven't totally decided yet. But I hope you liked it. If you do, please share to encourage other people to start mapping um, field names and the etymology of their townland names or just to read up on it. You know, you don't have to map it, just read up on it and, you know, it's interesting. So thank you again and I shall see you soon in another video. Until then, take care. Slán.